So now let us do a last minute revision. So for the subject of physics for class 12 CBSC, so that is chapter number 3, so that is current electricity. So here we have a glance at the important formulas. So number 1, electric current I is given by dq divided by dt or I equal to q by t. And in case of an electron revolving in a circle of radius r and with speed v, the time period of the revolution is given by t equal to 2 pi r divided by v. And the frequency of the revolution v is given by 1 by t and that is equal to v divided by 2 pi r. So since the time period t equal to 2 pi r divided by v, the frequency of the revolution is its ratio 1 by t and that will be equal to v divided by 2 pi r and the current I is given by E divided by capital T and where T is the time period of revolution and that is equal to E V divided by 2 pi R. And number 3, so Ohm's law, so Ohm's law in its mathematical form is given by I equal to V by R. So where V is the voltage or the potential difference across the body and R is the resistance of the body. And number 4, current in terms of the drift velocity Vd is given by I equal to n into E into A into V suffix D where n is the density of the free electrons. Number 5, the resistance of a uniform conductor is given by R equal to I by A and it is further equal to M into I divided by n e square into tau into a. Number 6, the resistivity or the specific resistance rho is given by r into a divided by i and that is equal to m divided by n e square into tau. The resistance of a conductor of length l and area of cross section a is given by r equal to rho l divided by a. And the conductance G is given by so 1 by R and conductivity is, is nothing but so 1 divided by resistivity and that is given by sigma equal to 1 divided by rho and that is further equal to L divided by R into A. Number 10, the relation between the current density and the electric field J is given by sigma into E and this is the another forum of representation of the Ohm's law. The mobility mu is given by the drift velocity divided by E and the temperature coefficient of resistance alpha equal to R2 minus R1 so divided by R1 into in bracket T2 minus T1. So where T2 minus T1 is the, the temperature coefficient of resistance alpha is given by this formula R2 minus R1 divided by R1 into T2 minus T1. The equivalent resistance Rs of a number of resistance so connected in series is given by the summation of the individual resistances so connected in series. So that is Rs equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. And similarly the equivalent so resistance in parallel connection is given by so 1 by Rp equal to so 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 plus 1 divided by R3 plus so on. So this is the equivalent resistance so when connected in series and in parallel. So next the EMF of a cell E is given by so W by Q and the terminal voltage V of a cell is given by V equal to E minus I R so implies while discharging of a cell and while charging of a cell V is given by and equal to E plus I into R and when the cell is open we have V equal to E and when the cell is short circuited we have V equal to 0 and the terminal potential difference of a cell V is given by I into R and that is equal to E R divided by capital R plus R. The internal resistance of a cell R is given by so capital R into E minus V divided by V 
and for n cell so connected in series we have i equal to n into e divided by capital R plus n R and for n cells in parallel the current i is given by i equal to so n into capital E divided by so n into capital R plus R and the energy delivered across a resistor H equal to I square into R T and that is equal to further so V square divided by R into T or this can be a so further equated to V into I into T and the power delivered across a resistor P is equal to I square R or this is also equal to V square divided by R and further equal to V into I. The resistance of a bulb or any device is given by R equal to the rated voltage of the bulb square so divided by the rated power of the bulb and the voltage so division rule so here you can see R1 and R2 are two resistors so connected in series we have V1 and V2 are the voltages across R1 and R2 and which is connected to a cell of voltage V. So therefore in series connection we have V is directly proportional to R. So therefore we have V1 divided by V2 equal to R1 divided by R2. So this can be further simplified as V1 equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 into V and V2 equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into V. So this is the voltage so division rule. So next we will see the current division rule. So here you can see in this figure we have two resistances R1 and R2. So where I1 and I2 are the current passing through the two resistances R1 and R2. So therefore in parallel connection we have I is inversely proportional to R. So that means we have I1 divided by I2 equal to R2 divided by R1. So therefore individual current I1 equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 into I and similarly I2 equal to R1 divided by R1 plus R2 into I. And when the cells are connected in series as shown in this figure, so we have R effective equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus Rn so, so on plus R. So therefore where R1, R2 are the individual resistances and E effective is nothing but E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus so on up to E. And it follows the sign convention for E effective. So this is the, the expression for R and E so with respect to the connection in series. So when the cells are connected in parallel as shown in this figure we have the R effective so that is the resistance the effective resistance is given by 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus so on up to 1 by Rn and E effective is given by E1 so divided by R1 plus E2 divided by R2 plus so on up to En divided by Rn so divided by so 1 divided by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus so on up to so 1 by Rn. So this is the, the effective resistance and effective E so with respect to the cells connected in parallel. So next so here in this figure you can see a balanced Wheatstone bridge of resistances R1, R2, R3 and R4. So here you can see that Ig equal to 0. So here you can see that the current in the galvanometer is equal to 0 and the potential at V equal to the potential at D. So this implies Vc minus Vd equal to 0 and the resistances R1 divided by R2 equal to R3 divided by R4. So this is the principle of the Wheatstone bridge. So that is R1 divided by R2 equal to R3 divided by R4 or we can say by cross multiplying this we have R1 into R4 is equal to R2 into R3. And further in a balanced meter bridge as shown in the figure we have the unknown resistance X so given by R divided by X equal to L divided by 100 minus L. 
so where we have the length of the resistance so that is a to b we have the resistances r and the unknown resistance x and the potential gradient of a potentiometer wire ab is k equal to we have the voltage on the wire ab so divided by the length of the wire ab so here you can see the the potentiometer wire ab so given by the potentiometer wire so ab of length equal to 1 meter and in a potentiometer experiment the comparison of emfs of two cells is given by e1 divided by e2 equal to l1 divided by e so l2 so this is a direct method so where l1 is the balancing length for cell e1 and l2 is the balancing length for the cell e2 and e1 by e2 equal to so l1 plus l2 divided by l1 minus l2 so this is the sum and difference method so in this case the l1 is the balancing length when e1 supports e2 and l2 is the balancing length when e1 supports e2 so when e1 opposes e2 and in a potentiometer experiment the value of the unknown emf is given by e equal to k into the balancing length and in a potentiometer experiment the internal resistance of a cell can be determined using the equation r equal to shunt resistance into in bracket so balancing length without shunt divided by the balancing length with shunt minus 1 and the graphs of the i and v is given by for an ohmic current you can see that slope is given by i by r and the area under the current time graph so gives the amount of charge passed through the conductor and that is equal to q equal to integral from t1 to t2 i into dt and the terminal voltage v of a cell so versus the current drawn from a cell is given by v equal to e minus i into r or in other words we can say v equal to so minus ir plus ec and this implies that it is a straight line so y equal to minus x so minus mx plus c so here you can see the straight line so between the terminal voltage of a cell and the current drawn from the cell is a straight line so following the equation y equal to so minus mx plus c so this completes the the last minute revision of the some important formulas at a glance and in the chapter on the chapter 3 the so that is the current electricity okay thank you <music>